everybody. How are you all doing today? Nice. So uh, on behalf of the Adobe staff, I would like to thank you for being here this afternoon. I'm personally very psyched to have us all together in one physical space. It feels really good to be back. We have great content for you this afternoon, and we have a fantastic speaker lineup. So I hope that by the end of this event, you will leave this room energized, inspired, and connected with your peers. The sole focus on this uh, topic today is going to be to focus on one of the best opportunities that we all have in common here in the room, how to make the customer experience and to make the digital economy personal. So let me explain it a little bit. So the shift over digital for the past couple of years has been outstanding and pretty much unprecedented. Many brands have gone through their digital transformation way before the pandemic. But the sudden shift and urge to change your entire operations and your business seemingly overnight has been overwhelming. Many brands, and I'm sure many of you here in the room, had to take bold steps to make that happen and introduce some of the toughest choices in the industry again to make that happen. The shift to digital across industries has been constant and shows no sign of slowing down. The digital economy that we're in right now is producing a lot of good growth for business. And this business is estimated to hit a trillion dollars in the United States alone. So the question that I have for you, for your teams and organization is, are you set up for success? Are you creating those bold, rich customer experience with your consumers? Well, this is what we're going to see today. So uh, let's start first with the data. We know that responsible use of data is the foundation to any good relationship that you might do with your consumers. When you execute your experiences, those experiences can either make or break the trust between your brand and your consumers. And that's the reason why we think that personalization comes into play. And we're not talking about personalization just adding the first name of your consumers everywhere in your email. No, that's only a first step. What we're talking about is to go one step, two steps, many steps ahead in truly understanding your consumers so you can serve them with the experiences that they want and deserve. We've actually asked uh, many brands in a piece of research that we've done with Forrester, saying, well, how are you doing with personalization? And we've measured that two-thirds of these brands saw an increase in their revenue compared to their peers who are not using personalization. An additional two-thirds saw an increase in the net promoter score, and an additional and final two-thirds saw an increase in the customer lifetime value across a period of three years. Personalization is a business mandate, and we need to make sure that we can execute our strategy based on a new set of standards. We at Adobe believe that these set of standards will give you the ability to execute personalization at scale to make sure that you create those compelling, beautiful, real-time customer experiences, whether your consumers are online, offline, or using the immersive, immersive technologies that are growing in, uh, in, in consideration in the market. So where do we start? You might think that this is easy. Well, it might, and sometimes it is not that easy. And that's the reason why you're here today, so we can lift the lid to real-time experiences of some of the most progressive brands, in addition to showing you the product in action and having tech talks so we can talk about what it means for you in the business. So let's start with understanding, truly understanding your consumers. So um, customer needs are constantly evolving. Gone are the days where we would only and solely focus on understanding your consumers based on their, let's say, gender or demographic or age. That's gone. However, what we might think is that maybe we should ask people, consumers, about what they think of these labels. 
we think that customer needs are in constant movement, complex and fluid at the same time. So we asked 6,000 consumers across Europe about what they thought of these labels, demographic labels. Are they relevant to them? Are they still good? And should we use them as businesses to drive the conversation between our brands and consumers? Well, let me tell you that the result was pretty outstanding because the majority of our consumers said that brands need to understand us as the unique individual that we are. So what does it mean for us? I think the first takeaway that we need to take from this research is that we need to move away from seeing people as statistics. I know that we have these labels saying Generation Z, Millennials, uh, Baby Boomers, whatever. I don't think it will be sufficient for our strategy to just use them and set, set it in stone like that. Um, we had a debate, actually, before this event, and we find it interesting that although it can be an interesting start to the conversation, these labels shouldn't be the final destination. So our first key uh, takeaway is probably to move away from these labels. It's interesting because the findings of this research is that 73% of people say that they, are, um, they, they want to be uh, individuals uh, with their own taste and, uh, and beliefs. 78% think that their taste is evolving every few months. And 37% of them uh, want to, to make sure that they, we truly understand them as new people that they were a year ago. I mean, we've gone through a pandemic, so we're definitely different. Uh, different in way we communicate, different way we talk, we communicate, we work. So obviously, we need to take into account this. Here's the problem for us leaders, is that we need to find a way to capture those ever-evolving customer experiences and personalize data in real time. And the majority of customers and brands, sorry, the majority of brands are not doing it today. Um, the same consumers that we talked about, the 6,000 uh, people, they said that two-thirds of brands are missing the mark because they don't truly understand who they are, leaving only a third of brands that are doing just okay. So what does it mean again for us? We need to make sure that we create those real-time experiences where we truly understand their cons uh, consumers at the individual level. And that means that we need to solve a paradox that you probably all know about, is that on one hand, you have consumers who want to be treated as the unique individuals that they are, and on the other hand, they want to value their privacy. So they're asking you to make a choice to blend these two things together. The future is cookie-less. So you need to find a way to act in your strategy, to implement your strategy on a first-party cookie where the mutual consent is done. And by mutual, we mean that you need to find a way, a two-way street between your brand and your consumers to not only collect the data, use it, but with the consent of your consumers. And that's going to be e extremely critical for the success of your strategy. Um, we talk with a lot of customers, obviously with you, with partners. We have a lot of experience in implementing your projects. And we can tell you that there are at least three pillars for the success of any customer experience. And you're going to see these pillars throughout this event. First is around data, and we talked about it know the customer at the individual level. The second one is content. What is the story that you're going to tell me as a consumer? This story is filled with assets. So you need to find a way to not only scale your business, but have a velocity to create these assets, to expose these beautiful assets to your audience. And the third one is the journey. How are you going to tell that journey? We're going to be talking about channels, email, call center, anything that you're going to use to connect the dots and talk with a customer. When we say journey, we're past the channels, because sometimes the best channel is to say nothing, because that's the right decision at that moment in time. So what does it mean, again, from a technology perspective? Obviously, we're Adobe. We want to be your technology partner. And you need to ask a question for yourself. 
is your customer data management platform helping you in two different ways, to understand your consumers and to act on the data that you collected to create those beautiful experiences. We believe that the Adobe Real-Time CDP, part of Adobe Experience Cloud, is the solution to do that. And it's actually the unique solution on the market to do all the above that I talked about. The final thought that I really want to share with you is actually a personal thought and how to make a connection with your consumers. Look, we're all leaders here. We're all responsible for your brands. But whether it's to buy a skincare product, to refinance your home, or to change a cell phone plan to your cell phone bill, or even to engage with the brand represented by the person sitting next to you, I bet that a year from today, you won't remember the specifics of that relationship. You won't remember how many emails or phone calls or what kind of banners you saw on their website. You won't remember a year from now. But I can tell you that you will all remember if it was a good or a bad experience. This is the aftertaste that your consumers will have as they experience your brand. So that's exactly what we want to achieve. And we want to be a partner to your success in the digital economy to make sure that this aftertaste is as memorable as possible, as delightful as possible. On that note, I really want to make, uh, hand it over to Paul and Peter, who are going to show you the technology in action. Thank you so much for being here, and I will see you after that. Thank you.